Would I be the a-hole if I told my child's father to stop trying to establish contact? My child is now 27, so this isn't a minor we're talking about. I got pregnant at 17, and he hung around for about 6 weeks after finding out. We'd been dating for about 9 months by then. So, the important details. 1. His family, parents, and siblings refused to acknowledge my child is his. I offered them visitation after her, and never got a response. 2. Despite not acknowledging the paternity, his parents began threatening me with taking the baby away, threatening to lie and claim I was unfit, etc. 3. I got a lawyer's advice about enforcing a court order for him to establish both paternity and visitation rights after the threats from his family due to an increased risk of parental abduction. 4. He only contacted me twice after I had my baby. Once to see if I had a baby, then once to ask if he could take the baby for the weekend the next day. Baby was nearly three months old at a time, and he'd never even come by to meet the baby. I told him to establish paternity as he was not on a birth certificate because he was not present at birth, custody rights, and child support. He never contacted me directly again, not once. Over the past 27 years, he ran into a friend of mine and let slip that he'd been keeping a close eye on us, knew where we lived, knew about a haircut my child got the weekend before, and a lot of things he should not have known. So I locked down any social media accounts we had. My child was about 15 at a time. My child is known about by your father since 12, known his name and details since 18, and I have offered to help my child get in touch with him. But my child did not want to. Then about two weeks ago, one of his nieces reached out to my child online and wanted a DNA test done and felt confident they were cousins. After my kid and I talked about it a lot, I admitted more of the trauma they put on me during the pregnancy. But I still said, if you want to contact them, you can. They are your family. My kid said absolutely not, reached out, and basically told the cousin that it just was not going to happen. Then we got a bomb that his entire family, four siblings, their partners, their kids, and even grandkids, have known about my child the entire 27 years. They talk about my child often, look at photos when they can find any, and basically treat my child as his long-lost but much-wanted child. I, predictably, am the witch who stole the baby from their lives. Now his mom, who was extremely vile towards me during my pregnancy, really regrets not insisting that they have my child in their lives. I even found a baby photo I had sent them 27 years ago on her Facebook. So, would I be the a-hole if I reached out to him and told him to see himself right the hell out of our lives again? and to tell his mom that my child very much wants absolutely nothing to do with them, and that even if my child's mind changes, it will never include Bio Dad or his mother after everything that went down? Cause I kind of just want to drop a house on that witch. Now for the top comments. You would not be the a-hole. Oh my god, Opie. Your baby daddy and his family are insanely toxic and honestly creepy. He ran into a friend of mine and let slip that he'd been keeping a close eye on us, knew where we lived, Knew about a haircut my child got the weekend before, and a lot of things he should not have known. This is weird that he just been watching. Now that is out of the way, I have a feeling he has been lying to his family, claiming that you kept your child away from him, when in fact, he almost was never in the child's life, nor do the child want a relationship with him. His family's insane. His mom planned to lie and call you and fit in order to take your child from you, when her own son only contacted you twice about his kid and never been in their life at all. I have a feeling the spouses slash partners and the kids, my kids' cousins and even siblings, apparently there are like 15 of them, don't know what happened. His mother 100% knows how it all went down. While pregnant, I reached out via letter once to let them know how to contact me in case they wanted to be included in my child's life, as my kid was their first grandchild, and then again shortly after my baby was born with a newborn photo, and another invitation to contact me and talk if they ever wanted to meet the baby. His parents never responded. It was like a punch in the gut to find out just how much he knew about us. At the time, our accounts were all private online, but I realized there were some things that had been set to public on Facebook. That said, a lot of the things he mentioned were not even posted online, where all of my kids went to school, for instance. We took steps to make sure our lives were even more private after that. For a long time, it felt like we were being watched anywhere we went. Not the a-hole. I wouldn't say you'd be an a-hole. However, I'd say since your child is 27, it's not your place to say anything anymore. Your child is legal adult and has been for nearly a decade. If your son randomly changes his mind one day to get to know the people, 
you don't have any say in that, nor should you. You also should not be speaking on your son's behalf. Oh, my kid did reach out to the cousin and said basically that they wanted nothing to do with a family that put their mom through so much trauma. I reached out and talked to the cousin to make sure the cousin knew that I had never denied a dad or his family the right to be in my kid's life. And I let her know that my child would not be happy if other family members decided now was the time to get in touch. My kid was really upset at a conversation with her cousin, not because of the cousin, who was really understanding and respectful of the situation, but because they felt 27 years was way too long to suddenly decide the bio family wanted to be involved. My kid handled it well, but I wanted to just reinforce that my dad and his mother should not take my kid's response as an invitation to suddenly reach out. Mostly, I want to reach out because of the deep anger I thought I had forgotten a long time ago. I'm so angry at the number of memories I had forgotten, at a little ways they inflicted trauma on me that I had not thought about in probably 20 years. This would solely be about me wanting to tell them off for how I was treated and for my kid being good enough to be a story, but never actually a part of the family. I know, it's a complicated mess. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my former stepmother to go F herself? Last week, I was back in my hometown helping a friend take his truck to the dealership. While it was in the shop, we went and got lunch at a pretty popular spot, and we got sat next to my former stepmother and former stepbrother. My ex-stepbro and I don't talk, but he's close with my younger sibling, because for about 8 years they lived together. I was older and really never had a connection with them. But it was me who caught my dad cheating on my mother with my now ex-stepmom when I was 12. A year later, he left us for her, moved a block away into her house. Things sucked for a while. Life was a big slap in the face for a while, and I worked through high school and college to support my mom and brother, because my dad didn't think it was his problem anymore, and my former stepmother encouraged that. Later, my ex-stepmom cheated on my dad and left him. All good in my opinion, as that relationship needed to end. Anyway, she interrupted our meal and asked me how I was. And I looked her in the eye and asked her what the heck she thought she was doing. She said, just saying hi. I looked at her and then my former stepbro and said, Hey stepbro, always a pleasure to see you my friend. As he's a bystander, shook his hand and ignored them. She tapped my arm and said, What am I, invisible? And I lost it, to be honest. I looked at her and said, You can go F yourself. Don't speak to me. I don't want to talk to you. Who the heck do you think you are right now? Why on earth would you ever think I'd want to talk to you now that I don't legally have to? She said she was just being polite, and I asked her if she was still messing around with married guys. My friend asked for the check and we left. He was cool about it as he remembers what my home life was like. But my brother thinks I was too harsh, and my dad thinks I created drama from nothing. My wife thinks it was embarrassing even though she wasn't there. Personally, I still think she can go F herself. My friend also thought it was extreme, even though he was understanding. Ha ha ha, not day hole. Tell it like it is. That's how I feel. But after talking to my wife, I really think I should have just been polite and left instead of being explosive. Some people just need those explosives though. Thumbs up. Your wife should understand why and how that reaction is not embarrassing. So we've talked about it a lot since I posted. I think she started to realize, reading some of these responses, that she didn't truly understand how crappy my childhood was. She's come around and now thinks that even though it wasn't ideal, it was more of an expression of a really deep pain that never completely healed. And not some enhanced anger. I think, yes, I sort of gave into some emotions I wasn't really prepared to feel, but I also think healing-wise I'm okay. It's not that I don't talk about it or that it's some taboo subject within our family, but she grew up in a very stable and loving home. So she has a hard time wrapping her head around it all. Sometimes she underestimates the damage, other times she overestimates it. Little of both this time. So, are you in contact with your dad then? He's the one who tore up your family. Don't get me wrong, I think that she's trash too. His dad wasn't present at a time. Ex stepmother was. Nothing in the post implies that Opie gives dad a free pass. He screwed them over financially, and stepmother encouraged it. In his comment, I hope he mentioned that his dad said that he created a necessary drama. I asked Opie about his relationship with dad, though when that ex-mom knew that she was being ignored, she should have left Opie alone. But she chose to actually tap Opie. She needed to be snapped on. Opie stepped up when his low-life dad stepped down. Next story. Am I the a-hole for trying to dictate who my fiancé will walk with as a groomsman on his best friend's wedding? 
My fiancé Paul has a best friend Jack. Jack has been with his fiancé Natalie for seven years, while Paul and I have been together for six. Natalie always had a weird obsession of hooking up Paul and her sister Mary and setting them up as a couple. Paul was never interested in Mary, but Natalie and Mary always tried to grab his attention. After Paul and I got together, Natalie would always try to exclude me from every single group gathering and would even try to set up double dates between her, Jack, Paul, and Mary. Paul wouldn't have it and set boundaries early on, but neither Mary nor Natalie respected them and kept crossing boundaries. Paul then had to cut them off and only kept contact with Jack. After some years of no contact, Natalie apologized to Paul and me about her behavior and promised it's all in the past and that her and Mary acted immaturely and Mary has moved on as well. As grown adults, we decided to move on, but Paul kept feeling uncomfortable around Mary because she hadn't completely changed her behavior around him. Anyway, fast forward to the wedding, which is in a couple of months, Jack asked Paul to be his groomsman and Paul happily accepted. It wasn't until now that Natalie said that Paul will walk down the aisle with Mary, to which Paul refused. He listed all of the reasons and why he doesn't want to. I was also against it because Mary has indeed not changed, and neither I nor Paul are comfortable with that setting. After some back and forth, Natalie called me and begged me to convince Paul and said, please don't act insecure about this. You know how important a wedding is to a bride, don't ruin this for me. To which I replied that I understand the importance of her wedding, but mine and Paul's discomfort is more important to us than her wedding. I said you could literally pick any other girl to Paul to walk with, yet you picked Mary. How convenient. After some continuous back and forth, Natalie and Jack tried to convince Paul to accept Mary in this occasion. To which he said no, and if it's such a deal breaker then he's stepping down as a groomsman. Anyway, now Natalie and her family are accusing me and Paul for trying to dictate what they will do at their wedding and say we are the ones who are overstepping. Now for the top comments, not the a-hole. The important part here is Paul's discomfort. This isn't just you dictating. Jack isn't being a good friend for insisting on this if it's making Paul uncomfortable. You said he's a groomsman, not the best man. That's the only scenario I could see where they want the maid of honor and best man to walk together for the flow, but it's not the case here. If it's going to ruin the wedding, Natalie needs to take a long hard look at herself and why this is such a hill to die on for her. The lack of self-awareness on a bride's part shows a high level of egocentrism. She knows exactly what she's doing, not the a-hole. Maybe it's time to go no contact if they haven't changed. Why can't they walk with any other bridesmaid? That's what both Paul and I said. Why can't it be any other bridesmaid? We got no clear answer to that, besides the fact that it's the bride's vision to be that way. Lol, let's be honest, we know why it's the vision. Of course we do, but they wouldn't say that out loud. And they are still trying to hook those two up. If someone cannot respect my relationship, then I don't have a place for them in my life. I'm glad your boyfriend understood how messed up all this is. He needs to have a final talk with his friend flat out say if this is the hill he wants to die on, then their friendship is done. Explain how inconsiderate this is. Reverse it to the groom. How would you feel if someone was ignoring his relationship and trying to hook up his partner with someone else? This is friendship ending material right here, not the a-hole. Last story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to bring my girlfriend's son along with me to my guy's night? I, 43 male, have been involved with my 42 female girlfriend for about a year and change. She has three kids, 20 female, 19 female, and 17 male. Her ex-husband abandoned the family almost immediately after the youngest was born. I like and get along with all three of her kids really well, but her son who will call Jake and I have especially formed a good connection. I've taken him out with me off-roading, fishing, and golfing. So, recently my girlfriend asked me what I was doing Saturday night, wanting to do something with me. I told her, sorry, but Saturday night is guy's night. I'm going to my friend's house with most of my other buddies and co-workers for poker night. She seemed a little annoyed, but said, fine, but then will you at least bring Jake along with you? I told her that we'd drink a good bit, and some of us smoke cigars, and we get a little rowdy and probably somewhat inappropriate. She said, well, obviously don't allow him to drink or smoke but he should hang out with some guys being guys. He grew up without his father, and it would be good for him. But I just didn't want to bring him along. I admit that part of the reason why is because I just want to hang out with my buddies and have fun without having to worry about being a role model for Jake. But I also just think that this sort of environment isn't appropriate for a teenager. 
It's not horrible or anything, but our guys' nights are for adults. But my girlfriend seems to think that I should have included Jake, since she gave her approval. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. If Jake was grown, like 25 plus and wanted to go, it might be a little different to bring him along because he'd be able to drink, smoke, and probably even be able to hold his own in the crap talking that takes place on guys' nights. But he's 17. He can't drink. He can't smoke. And I'll be honest, I imagine it'd be uncomfortable for everybody involved to have a kid at a guy's night, unless he's used to hanging out with older guys and already has a feel for the kind of things that can and cannot be said when crap talking. But still would not be the a-hole in that situation too, in my opinion. Sometimes you need a break. It's not a break as in getting rest, but to get a break from your daily grind, be in a different environment, receive new input and experiences. Opie may not get that if he brings the daily environment and responsibilities with him. It even goes beyond OB. Maybe the group of friends have worked up a little of trust and comfort to be like themselves and share thoughts and feelings, or act and unwind in ways they don't get to do elsewhere slash everywhere. Bringing in a new element could ruin that experience for everyone else too. Not day whole. She is not thinking about this clearly. He is an underage kid and you're his mom's boyfriend. It would be awkward for everyone involved. While it's okay she wants him around guys being guys, your guys' night is not a time for babysitting a teen. He gets fishing trips and other things you mentioned. Insist that this is not the event, especially because your friends aren't bringing their kids too. That would be unfair to them. It may even be unfair to Jake. It doesn't sound like the girlfriend asked Jake if he wanted to go to Opie's poker night, just that she wants Opie to take him. Most 17-year-old boys have better things to do on Saturday night like play video games, hang out with friends, and go on dates, then sit with my mom's boyfriend and friends watching them be guys. Part of me wonders if having Jake tag along is the girlfriend's way of checking up an OB. She wanted to do something with him, he already has plans, so she wants to know what happens at these guys' night, slash verify that is actually happening.